Samantha's life was not easy. Her father died heroically in a hot spot when she was young. Her mother raised the girl alone, pulling her weight, trying to provide for her daughter. But she wasn't doing a very good job. Sam's mother, Victoria, was sickly. Sometimes she stayed on sick leave for months until her employer started hinting to her that he did not need perpetually sick employees. Once again, having resigned at her own request, my mother would shut herself up in her room, sobbing into her pillow with helplessness. She and her mother were always short of money. Sometimes there was only bread for dinner, which the girl dipped in salted sunflower oil or empty pasta. She was the worst-dressed girl in her class. Kids can be mean. They say what they see. Sami was considered an outsider in class. The poorness of her clothes was discussed by all the girls. She grew accustomed to the taunts of her classmates, whispering in the back row that even today Sam came dressed in a darned-up sweater. When Sam turned 14, her mother passed away. An aunt, her late mother's sister, took over the upbringing of her niece. Sam's life here did not get any better either. Aunt Claire called the girl a slacker and lazy, but she had no desire either to work or to run a household. Claire immediately realized that Sam girl is quite mature. She can be adapted to housekeeping. Aunt hinged all the household chores on her niece and also chased the girl for wine at the nearest store, the place where the liquor could give a loan to the best friend of Claire who worked there. Aunt Claire liked to drink red wine in the evening. When there was no money for wine, she did not hesitate to run to a neighbor for vodka. At the end of the month, they ate only bread, dipping it in lean butter. Claire did not hold on to the money. After the debts were dispersed, the aunt and her niece were broke. The tipsy aunt kept singing the same song, Sam, when are you going to get married, which often brought her niece to tears. The same friend who sold Sam wine for her aunt had a son. Emily worked in her own son's store. Claire was fiercely jealous of their family's wealth. More than once her aunt started conversations with Sam about whether she likes her friend's son, but the girl just kept silent. When Sam became an adult, Claire began to paint her a rich life with a son of Emily. But she thought more about her own well-being than about the girl. If Samantha became the wife of the owner of the store, she would be able to go to the store, even without taking money with her. And then the debts cannot be paid. Claire owed her friend a considerable sum. But her niece was in no hurry to bring her aunt into the well-fed world she had dreamed up. The always obedient Sam suddenly rebelled and started screaming that she would not solve her aunt's financial problems. She really got on her nerves, daily pressuring the girl and forcing her to marry her friend's son. One day Sam could not stand it. I am not going to solve your financial problems. Then her niece left, slamming the door loudly. Coming back after a while, Sam gathered the most necessary things, took with her a piggy bank, which her aunt did not know about. She began collecting money on a dime since she had been in her house. The money she had saved should have been enough to pay for her room. The girl also remembered to take her father's order and her award documents. Awards were the only memory of her dead father. The order became a talisman for Sam. The money was enough not only to pay the rent for the modest housing of an old landlady, but also for food for the first time. After moving out of her aunt's house, the girl wondered how she was going to live. Going to university was out of the question, because she had to pay for her room and live on something while she studied. One day at the supermarket, Sam was given a free newspaper that advertised the city's vacancies. There were many job offers, but they were all specialized, and Samantha, who had no education, did not fit the criteria. Sam randomly chose a phone number of a company that required a janitor. Where else would she be hired after high school? All she had to do was wiggle the floor with a rag, earning a living with this simple task. 
the personnel department hired her right away. Because of the particularly toxic staff cleaners in this company did not last, the office was in the dirt for three days. After signing the employment contract, Sam immediately proceeded to duties. Going into one of the rooms, where there were many computers and sat office workers, Sam began diligently scrubbing the floor. What is that stench? I don't understand. Sam flinched when a sharp shout sounded in her ear. A beautiful but very angry maiden was screaming. She looked like one of those beautiful villainesses from the movies. Marion had striking black eyebrows, almond-shaped eyes, raven-crowned hair, high cheekbones, and a sharp chin. One look at her was enough to know that this beauty was a villain. Still, the girl was more than pretty. What are you looking at? Can't you smell the mop stinking of rot? Go and wash with the detergent now, the venomous beauty commanded imperiously. Walking past the two guys sitting almost at the exit, Samantha heard them whispering, assessing her figure and her other virtues. Samantha was also a pretty girl, but unlike the girl who chased the new cleaner, her beauty was gentle and soft. Sam had kind features, big gray eyes, a high forehead, childishly plump lips, and blonde, thick hair gathered into a careless ponytail with a simple terry cloth rubber band. Even the old, out-of-fashion baggy clothes could not conceal her thin waist and high breasts. Shyly downcast, with a mop in her hand, she reminded the boys of poor Cinderella, who had been scolded by one of the daughters of the wicked stepmother. They shared these observations in low whispers, so they wouldn't be overheard by the local office queen therein. It was she who scolded Samantha. At the same time, the boys shared their impressions of the new cleaning lady. The girl was certainly not bad, only her clothes and shoes were cheesy. Only in vain did the boys think that Marianne could not hear them whispering. The queen of the office had an excellent ear. All evil women have it, and they love to do bad things to others. Samantha had not yet managed to leave the room, and Marianne with rapture discussed with fellow women every part of her poor old closet. Sam wanted to break the mop on her knee and tell everyone to hell but the memories of their own plight stopped her. Not giving vent to the surge of emotion, she rinsed a rubber roller, then returned to the office and began to scrub the floor again, not paying attention to taunts of the female half of the team. Every day spent at work seemed to her like hell. Mariana managed to turn against the new cleaner not only the employees but also the bosses. Only one guy sympathized with the girl the same one who called her Cinderella the first time they met. One day, he secretly waited for Samantha outside the office because the cleaning lady's workday ended later than the other employees. Waiting for her, Ethan invited her into a cafe. They chatted merrily. Ethan seemed like an open and kind guy. But the next day, in one of the long corridors of the office, she was approached by one of Marianne's friends. What a fool you are. You found someone to hook up with. Ethan, Marianne's boyfriend, they're going to get married. She'll kill you if I tell her that you went to the cafe with him. Marianne will be head of the department soon. That'll be fun for you, the girl said slyly. The next day, Samantha had an unpleasant surprise. When she walked into the room where the department where Marianne worked, she immediately heard the song, Hello, second-hand girl, and Marianne, with a serious face, began to ask her where she could buy the same vintage blouse as Samantha. Marianne referred to the girl's broken boots as rarities and Spanish boots, inventing more and more elaborate mockery of each item in the girl's closet. Employees present at the humiliation of Samantha politely giggled at the evil jokes of Marianne, not wanting to quarrel with the snide careerist. Ethan never called Samantha to the cafe again. Accidentally bumping into the young cleaning lady in the corridor, the guy embarrassedly hid his eyes and averted his gaze. 
he could not look into the eyes of the girl he liked so much. He was ashamed and disgusted of his betrayal because he giggled with everyone else, attending the play played by Marianne. He had long disliked Marianne, but he dared not even hint that they should break off relations. Ethan liked the work in the office, satisfied with the salary. He did not want to get into trouble to quarrel with the future head of the department. The guy hoped to advance in his career, to win a place in the sun by any means, if only by trampling sincere feelings and even betraying his barely-born love. After the harassment of the cleaner, who dared to claim her fiancé, Marianne was like a satisfied, well-fed vampire. The office queen was satisfied with the public humiliation of Samantha, so much that even for a while left the young janitor in peace. The ego that had reared its head in Samantha's soul was immediately confronted with the truth of life. If she quit her job, she risked losing her salary. In signing, she had not read the employment contract. Later, when Samantha came to talk to the Human Resources Department about quitting, she was told that if she left before the agreed deadline, without working at least one month, she would risk not getting a cent. Allegedly, it was written in the employment contract. She was sorry to lose the money she earned, so she had to stay. Money from the piggy bank was almost all gone. In addition, Sam now took care of the little pet. She could not leave Martin hungry. A little white kitten somehow miraculously snuck into the office. Sam had to hide him from the wicked Marianne until the end of the day. A kind soul, she could not leave a helpless one-month-old kitten in the street, so she took him home. A kind old lady in one of the rooms where Samantha lived was not against the kitty. Samantha named the kitten Martin, and when there was almost no money at all, the girl shared her last milk with the pet. The long-awaited payday coincided with the day the boss intended to visit the office. He was the head of the entire network of branches and businesses. The boss was feared by everyone but Marion. She managed to gain the former military man's trust. The boss liked her sharp mind, predatory beauty, courage, and boldness. When the boss was making rounds of their possessions, the chief did not apply to look in the department of his favorite. Seeing him, Marianne rose from her seat and hurried to meet him, accidentally catching an unfinished coffee on the armrest of a massive computer chair. A paper cup silently dropped to the floor, spilling the rest of the coffee. Quickly kicking the dirty cup under the table, Marianne put on a friendly smile and approached her boss. Hello, Mr. Johnson. Why haven't you come for so long? We missed you. Marianne sympathetically folded her beautifully contoured lips into a tube, as if she wanted to kiss the chief. Then she threw a vengeful glance at Samantha. Though, you know, it is not boring here. The personnel manager hires the odd man out. A new cleaning lady cleans the office really badly. We have to sit like a pixie. Marianne gently took her boss under her arm and led him to his workplace. Pointing her finger at the stain left by the spilled coffee, Marianne angrily nodded in Samantha's direction. Do you see it? Do you see how our cleaning lady cleans? My workplace is ignored at all, does not clean here at all. Now my place is always dusty and dirty. Mr. Johnson furrowed his brow. He was not an old man at all, imposing, with a military bearing. Marianne was well aware that the pedantic chief does not like disorder, so she decided to set up an upstart whom she considered her rival. Come to my office, leaving. The chief said Samantha displeased. His tone did not bode well. Why is the office a mess? Why do you perform your job duties so poorly? The chief carefully looked at the flaming face of the embarrassed girl. It was well cleaned, where did the stain and dirt come from? I do not know. Barely squeezed out Samantha. They just don't like me in the office. Marianne constantly picks on me. 
She probably spilled the coffee on purpose. She just wants you to fire me. Suddenly, Samantha became bold in front of her superiors. Mr. Johnson thoughtfully tapped the table with the cap of the pen. You seem like a good girl. Why is such a dislike of the office workers towards you? I do not know. And who are you? Introduce yourself. Samantha said her first and last name. Hearing Samantha's unusual last name made the boss nervous. And what is your middle name? What is your father's name? Samantha lowered her head, but proudly raised it again. My father's name was John, he died. But the boss interrupted the girl, continuing for her. In Iraq? He was a friend of mine. The captain died being mortally wounded, and he saved me by pulling me out of the line of fire. Then he thought for a long time. Samantha stood opposite, shifting foot to foot. The silence lingered. So that's it. You say that Marianne arranged hazing in the office. We'll sort it out. Go to work now. Tomorrow I'll hire another cleaner. It's not good for a hero's daughter to mop the floor. You're going to study. Is your mother still alive? Samantha shook her head in the negative. Long ago, the girl nodded affirmatively. So you has been an orphan, hasn't she? Do you have a place to live? Samantha shrugged her shoulders. I used to live with my aunt. Now I rent a room. The chief pressed his hand on the table into a fist so hard that her knuckles turned white. We'll sort it out. That day, Samantha ran to her rented apartment, not feeling her feet from happiness. Wow, her first paycheck, and even more than a generous bonus. Running into a pet store, she bought cat patties for Martin. When she saw a toy for kittens, she bought that too. She was very proud of herself that day. She would become a real provider. She would be able to feed herself and the kitty. And the best part, on the same day, the boss fired nasty Marianne, who had spoiled her life so much. Now no one will humiliate and mock her old ugly clothes. Although, she might as well buy herself something new now. After feeding Martin, she ran off to get some new clothes, but the next day was even more wonderful. Upon arriving at the office, Samantha was surprised to see an unfamiliar older woman mopping the floors. The personnel manager came over to Samantha. He brought a new contract. She was hired as a customer service operator. In the afternoon, the boss arrived. He again invited Samantha into his office, where he handed her the keys to her apartment. The key to my second apartment. I once bought this apartment for future children, but no children have happened yet. Live there. It's not good for my friend's daughter to be living in rented rooms. Oh, I have a kitty cat. Can I take the kitten with me? I can't go anywhere without Martin, said Samantha. Mr. Johnson laughed merrily. Yes, at least come in with an alligator. The apartment has been empty for a long time. You can do whatever you want with your kitty there. After picking up her things and Martin, Samantha said a warm goodbye to the old lady from whom she rented a room and moved into a spacious three-room apartment. After the move, Samantha didn't run to work. She flew. Even though she was listed as a simple operator, she hardly ever made any calls. The chief treated his friend's daughter like his own child. He bought new clothes, bought appliances for the apartment where she lived, started to introduce her to the company. The childless soldier saw Samantha as his successor. He wished that if something happened to him, that Samantha could replace him in all areas relating to the work of the network of offices and businesses. It was only Aunt Clara who kept saying that there was no money for training. A friend of Samantha's late father insisted on going to university to the economics department. With surprise, Looking at the transformation in the appearance and behavior of the former cleaner, the attitude towards her leadership, Ethan immediately found the courage to tell Marianne that their relationship is finished. He absolutely did not hurt Marianne with this statement. 
The girl had long considered him a hopeless jerk and tried to woo the son of her boss at his new job. After receiving a free pass from the former queen of the office, the opportunist tried to establish a relationship with Samantha, but the girl already knew the price of it, so she turned down his offer to go somewhere for a weekend. Samantha refused him briefly and coldly, wondering how she could have liked such a nobody before. The cunning opportunist was left with nothing, proved of no use to Marianne or Samantha. How could she ever have suffered for him, wept for his betrayal, when he had beckoned her, and then defected to Marianne? Where were my eyes? What could you like in a man like Ethan? except a sweet, marmalade-looking face, and I still suffered from unrequited love, even cried. She subdued herself for the past short-sightedness, Samantha. One day, buying food for Martin in a pet store, Samantha knocked one of the cans with pate off the shelf. Deftly picked up by a strong hand, the can did not fly to the floor. Don't save on cats, take good food, said a tall, unfamiliar guy approvingly, nodding at the bag of cat food in Samantha's hands. I try, I just love him. Astonished at the young man's dexterity and quick response, Samantha was a little confused. I love my cat, he's Savannah, and what breed of cat do you have? asked the boy. And I have a purebred, a breed picked up off the street, the girl joked back. He made it to our office. I picked him up so an evil woman wouldn't throw him out the window. So the cat stayed with me. I named him Martin, Samantha revealed. Not ten minutes after meeting each other, the boy and the girl were chatting as if they were old acquaintances. No understood Samantha's jokes, and she liked his openness and views on life, which he willingly shared with her. Quietly for Samantha, Noah accompanied her home. They stood outside the porch for a long time, chatting about everything. They wanted to talk to each other. The boy and the girl did not want to part, but it was already too dark outside. Samantha thought that it was still unseemly to sympathize with each other so obviously on the first day of acquaintance, but Noah beat her to it, saying that he did not want to leave, but it was a requirement of decorum. It was as if he had read her mind. As she climbed the stairs, Samantha was surprised to think that it turned out to be all true, about impulses, about union of souls, about her man. She had spent the entire night without sleep, replaying in her head the stories from the novels she had read to the holes, where the heroes met their soulmate. In the morning, completely sleepless Samantha got ready for work. For the first time in a long time, she did not want to go. She wanted to run to the pet store to try to find No. They even forgot to exchange phone numbers while talking. What was her surprise when she saw him coming out of the entranceway? You know, I couldn't get away from you. I just ran home to feed my cat, and then I came back to your house again. Stared at your window all night. The boy pointed to the second-floor window where Samantha lived and you were awake, too. I saw that the light in your bedroom was on all night. It's fate, you know? It was destined to happen that way. You are mine, and I am yours, period, said Noah, drawing the girl to him, greedily inhaling the scent of her hair. If you like the story, please support me with the thumbs-up button, and to find out about the release of new and interesting stories when you subscribe, Click the bell. All the best to you.